Welcome, guys. Welcome. How's everybody today? Hope everyone is having a great Friday. Uh, today we have an exciting fireside chat. We have Carl Carfetian, which is, uh, is he does uh, paper click ads. So he does a lot of keyword research for his clients and he's managing uh, around 100K a month in ad spend budget. So he knows his stuff. And uh, well, he's, we're going to do a, a live keyword research with him. Uh, welcome, Carl. Excited to have you here today, man. Yeah, same, same. I'm very excited. This is my first time doing like some public speaking, but someone in the community mentions that it's just basically like talking to your laptop. So it's less stressful. So yeah, I'm really excited, ready to dive in. Is there anything else we need to discuss before I go further? Uh, no, I think every, everything looks good from here. It's super cool how you're in the middle of the screen. Um, and nothing, if there's any audio issue, I'll let you know, but uh, please uh, start excited to hear this. All right, awesome. So guys, today we're just going to talk about keyword research, but it's actually mainly market research. It's, uh, I'll, I'll try... I try to design it for entrepreneurs, for freelancers, right? For people who are solopreneurs so that you can go on and just basically do it yourself without any help, without any Google Ads agency and so on. Just a, a quick introduction uh, and we'll just move on. Uh, so yeah, I'm managing 100K per month on Google Ads. I've been doing it for the last eight years. I work with B2B SaaS startups, with e-commerce brands, with a lot of like lawyers, cats, DNA testing, like toolkits and stuff like that. So a lot of different industries. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to share some of the learnings that I've got. So by the end, you'll know how to do market research. You will learn how to pick keywords for your blog and, and you'll generate a Google Ads media plan. So to get you started, this is very important. I've uh, in this document I'm I'm going to share it with you. You just click on it. You're going to end up on a video that shows you how to set up a Google Ads account because it's crucial for you to because I'm going to show it uh, using the keyword planner and it's inside of the Google Ads account, but no worries. You don't have to pay for anything. It's uh, you just connect your billing information and then you're good to go. You basically can use it for free forever. So you'll just click on this video, you'll create your Google Ads account and you'll be good to go. Um, so yeah, and let me show you how it works. So after you watch the video, sorry, I see the chat someone. Oh, it's uh, just some AI message for now. Okay, got I'll it. let you know got if it. anything important pops up. Okay, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. So guys, you, You'll follow the YouTube videos that we got, and basically uh, you'll have access to the Google Keyword Planner. It's a very powerful tool that, that will help you in like your ideations, in understanding like what people search for. Uh, for example, in e-commerce, we use it to build new products. We just take a look at the demand, what exactly people are typing, and we're just launching new products based on that. So what you'll need to do after you created your Google Ads account, you'll go to tools, you'll go to keyword planner, planning, and then you'll see this. So basically you can get search volume or you can discover new keywords. Uh, you don't need to use this. You don't need to use the get search volume. You need to discover new keywords because you'll see the search volume as well, like in, in any way, but you need to expand basically the amount of keywords that are out there. So a very important part, you need to pick a specific country. So whatever you're targeting, it may be United States and Canada. It can be just Germany. It can be whatever. So pick it here. Let's add Canada, for example. Cool. So, and there are two ways that you can go about it, right? You can start with keywords or start with a website. So you basically, let's say this is an automation agency. 
we copy, we just add it here. And then you can use either entire website or use a specific page to get the keywords. But I would recommend this method only when, let's say it's a big business and you have a very strong SEO team. So you have if you have a very strong SEO team, they already have done the research. There's a lot of keywords. So there's a lot of articles and Google will be able to like learn on this data and provide you a lot of really relevant keywords based on your website. But the problem is if your website has never been optimized and it's just like some text, maybe you put like very nice text together and it's like meeting a specific need, it's still not gonna be enough. But as an example, let's quickly do it. You click get results. And for example, right now we're looking at uh, data based on this automation website. So, and here we can see uh, the keywords that, that are available, like let's say 316, it says right here. And then you can see average monthly searches. So what it means is basically the estimate of like how many people type this specific keyword uh, per month, right? So specific keyword per month, let's say this keyword, process automation, 4,400 people type. And it's very, very important to note that you understand they type it in the Canada and the US. They don't type it in Germany. If you pick Germany, you'll see different situation. Uh, and I have a question, Carl. Yeah. Uh, if it, it's really important to have like few countries here, or it's okay, okay, like for example, to put a list of like um, five countries. No, no, no. You can have one country. You can, for example, you're doing local SEO, or you just you're a guy who's based in Canada, right? And you have an automation agency. Probably you should like stick with the local market, maybe. Uh, you, but uh, I, I believe you can add up to uh, twenty countries in the Google Keyword Planner. So it's up to you, like depends on okay. which market you want to target. Okay, but uh, I, I'm asking because, for example, I have clients in US, Canada, UK, also some in Spain. Do I put all of the countries that I have clients in or or maybe I segregate by language? Oh, what's the best thing for that? Uh, no, if you're targeting like different countries, like you can add as much as you want. So if you're saying like I target Canada, UK and so on, you just add them all here so that you can understand in this specific location that you're targeting. Let's say you're not targeting uh, in Germany, like in the German language. So you just don't add it. Uh, right. And then you'll see a different picture. You see it changed from 4,400 to 6,600 because, because we added UK and uh, Spain, I think. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to understand that the average monthly searches are tied to the location that you've picked for the specific keyword. So I think this is clear, the average monthly searches, very important part. And then you can see year on year change. So what it means, it basically compares the monthly search volume of the latest month with the same month, but the previous year. So let's say, AI automation, the people type it in these locations 4,400 times, but year on year change, it means like last year, they typed it only 2,200 times for this specific month. So I guess it's October, right? Uh, and you can see the different dynamics of how everything changes. So it's just like a good thing to know. Uh, the next part of the thing is the compet like competition. Uh, you, it can be low, it can be medium, or it can be high. It's basically like the amount of people that are bidding for this specific keyword. Let's say business process automation, competition is low, but business automation, competition is medium. Even though there's less search terms, but like more people are interested in this specific search term, like advertisers, they're putting their money into it. And like, I guess the auction is very packed and uh, the competition is gonna be higher. Um, yeah. And the last part 
is top of the page bit, top of page like high range, low range, basically what CPC you can expect for a specific given keyword. Let's say business process automation is between seven to 28. But it's, I never rely on this because whenever you start running the ads, like in, in reality, you see different CPCs. Uh, but it's just a very helpful thing to understand. Uh, sometimes Google is correct in this part, like in terms of the CPCs. Um, yeah, is there any questions so far about like this different columns? Did I explain it well or no? Uh, you think it's clear. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and competition awesome. is based on the prices or what is it based on? Like if it's low, medium or high? Um, you know, like I've, I've been working with it, but in terms of explaining, I think the best thing is like to just, for example, and uh, for yeah. you all, for example, if you don't understand, you forgot what we were talking about here, you can just get to the column, let's say competition, and it shows you the, the definition. So basically it shows how competitive ad placements is for a keyword specific to the location and search term volume. So the level of competition, low, medium, or high is determined by the number of advertising bidding on each keyword relative to all keywords across Google. So I guess that's what I said in the beginning, but just like using big words and more clear. Did okay. I answer your question? About yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like relative to the other keywords basically. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, Thanks. awesome. So, but the problem is I rarely use the website like start with a website and i wouldn't recommend it for you as well because you it's like it all depends on how good like if you have already done a good job with your keywords with your blogs then it's going to work well but most of the time nobody does a good job with their keywords so you just need to start with keywords so what it means you type specific keywords for your business or whatever you want to understand so that you get more keywords uh, in the plan, right? And also there is this feature, you can enter a site to filter unrelated keywords. Um, sometimes it's useful, but most of the time it just cuts, cuts out some keywords that are important. So I don't do it. Um, but for example, we're gonna use automation example let's say i have an automation agency and i'm like okay let's use this keyword planner i'm gonna type these keywords right i just type it let's say automation agency automation services automation expert and so on uh so is this part clear maybe you you guys want to add some keywords we can just type it right here for fun Uh, no code, for example. All right. We'll add no code as well. So you add whatever pops up in your head for whatever business. It can be real estate. It can be, I don't know, whatever product you want. You want to do the research, right? But in our case, we'll just do this example. We get the results and then we see a completely different pictures. Remember in the previous example, when I use my website, we had only like 300 available ideas from the Google, but now when we added the keywords, it's 1,760. So it's a completely different uh, result. And now we can work with it, right? So now we can see that people who type automation agency like 590 times, we can see like by months, like for this specific keyword, how many like, in a specific given month, how, how many people typed this keyword. Um, and yeah, for example, low code and stuff like that. But very important part about the keyword research is adding something that you think is not relevant to whatever you're selling. So for example, if I'm, a, let's say I own an automation agency, and I'm looking through these keywords and I see this connect wise patch management. I'm like, 
no, I don't want to advertise on it. It's not relevant because by the end, for example, what we're doing here, we want to create something like this. We want to download the data from Google Keyword Planner into a Google Sheet so that we can basically uh, go through important keywords and then uh, understand what are the most important keywords uh, and understand the search volume and so on. So our goal is to come up with something like this, but we don't want any irrelevant keywords in our data. So for example, this one is irrelevant or I hope you don't mind, I'm gonna remove the no code because for this example, I just wasn't prepared for it. Uh, so that we see like uh, what I've prepared for, if you don't mind. So let's say PSA software and I'm a automation agency like owner. And I'm like, oh, any keywords that contain software, let's say they're not irre they're irrelevant. I don't want to advertise for them or I don't want them in my final report. So what I can do is go to filters. You go to filters. Um, and then you click keyword. And then you can say does not contain. And then you add software, right? So it means that now after we refresh everything, the keyword ideas that we're gonna have, right? And we have like 1,491, but before we used to have, let's say 1,666. So anything that contains the word software is not gonna pop up in our research, right? Um, or for example, alternative to Zapier, right? It's not really, there is no purchasing intent behind something like this. It's more of a informational question uh, in, and like query. So you can also add it to the negative keyword, but so that you don't have to copy it, add it and so on. You can just click multiple, uh, let's say multiple keywords. You can copy them and then add them all to the Google sheet. Let's say you add them to a specific column, you call it negative keywords, and you just add them in one go through the, uh, by copying. And why, hmm? Carlo, why are you keeping track of negative keywords? Uh, because per, first of all, mm, you don't want your final, um, your, your final kind of result of your research to contain anything that's not relevant, right? If you're sending it to a client or if you're analyzing it yourself, you don't want any data that's like messing and like completely irrelevant to what you need or to what you're trying to sell. This is the first part or the second part with Google, You, it's uh, very important that you add them to Google. Otherwise you're gonna show up on keywords that are not relevant and you're just going to lose money. You're just going to spend money on some things that's not going to generate you any conversions. Okay, okay. Just mm -hmm. so you know which are not relevant to you. That's why you're putting it on the, the worksheet. Yeah, and yeah. For example, yeah, if you start running ads and you didn't add these keywords, imagine you're an agency owner and then you're spending $200 on a keyword where people typed email workflows, right? So you spend it accidentally because you didn't put a negative keyword because, and then of course they're not gonna convert because you're selling a completely different thing and they have a different intent uh, or industrial automation. So industrial automation has nothing to do with the software or automation or like uh, what we do. So, but, you, but you're gonna show up on this keyword on Google unless you add it to the negative keywords. Okay, okay. And if instead of ads, it will be just for SEO purposes, would it make sense to like create a blog post around that keyword because it has search volume? That's a good question. So before I answer it, I would just like to introduce everyone into like SEO, a couple of concepts. We also sometimes use it in 
like paid advertising. So keywords, they can be split into like informational ones, right? So informational, it searches want to acquire knowledge on a specific topic. They say how to use make.com. So this is informational keyword. Uh, navigational, it's when searches want to find a specific site or page. So they say, there is, let's say there is a website, specific website, it's your competitor and they're typing your competitor's name. So this is gonna be like a navigational. So they, they already looking for something specific that's close to what you're selling, let's say. Uh, the third one is commercial. So searches want to investigate brands, products or, or services. So for example, let's say someone types automation services and we, let's say, provide automation services. So that would be uh, a commercial intent. So, because otherwise, why would they type automation services or they type automation services agencies in Canada? So this is a commercial intent. Uh, and we're talking about like keyword categories. And the transactional one, it searches that want to complete an action. That they they're ready for purchase. So for example, they type automate uh hire make.com expert, like hire, right? They type it. So that would be a transactional keyword. Um yeah. And Santi, your question was I forgot my train of thought, but your question was, can you remind me one more time? Yeah, so for example, if you have um, advantages of make.com. Um, like you, you say, this is for for like for purchasing ads. It doesn't make sense, but for like writing a blog post, maybe it does to drive traffic to a website. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Yes, yeah, yeah, I remember. So it all depends on your vision, like in terms of SEO. Uh, some people say, yeah, it makes sense. Other people say it doesn't. For example, if you create a blog post around not automation export keyword, but you create a blog, blog post around make versus Zapier, what's best? And you, you kind of create blog post about that. Most likely you're gonna find people who, who are at a specific stage of their understanding. Maybe they're not, uh, they don't have money to purchase, maybe they do. So for SEO, informational purposes work. For PPC, no. So a good way to find out, for example, you can um, just run the campaigns and see like if it makes sense. Like, uh, I don't know. That's actually a good question. I'm, I'm just not sure about the intricacies of SEO. Uh, so if they do it, for example, in Google, you never do it. If you run the ads, you never run the ads for something close, but not you know, where they don't have intent to purchase most of the time. Right. But for, for SEO, it might like, make sense. For example, if you right. create an article about that, you might get some conversions, but I'm not sure if you will. So if there are any right. SEO experts here, maybe they can jump in yeah. and tell us. I'm thinking like for ads, since you're paying to appear there, you would rather pay for the ones that are people right there wanting to buy than someone that could potentially buy, and but they're Googling something like maybe for SEO, because it's like free then to have the article there. You can do it, but for ads, it would make sense just uh, the ones that have the highest intent of purchasing right away, right? Absolutely, yeah. But for example, I still would say like, let's say in this research, I would, for example, automation agency, maybe you you should put your effort, like your SEO effort in a keyword that says automation agency instead of like something that, that's close, but it can be people who are just looking for information, people who are never gonna buy from you, people who are just experts, your, and these experts are just trying to figure out something. So, so yeah, it's up to you. But for example, if you see something low volume, let's say automation expert, yeah, 260 searches per month. 
um, you can go for it and just try and see whenever you're going to rank for this keyword, if it's going to make sense for you. Perfect, thanks. Yeah, cool. So um, what you do then, you let's say you have this specific, you add some keywords that you don't want to see. You click on uh, download and then you download the Google Sheet. And then you name it whatever, uh, let's say, let's say this. And now you're gonna download this data from Google that shows you for these specific locations, uh, different keywords for the relevant business that you have. Uh, what I would recommend is for you to delete a couple of columns. So it looks like this. So for example, this, this is the same kind of export. I just made it more beautiful. Um, you just delete this delete these two columns, these ones, put a filter. I mean, I'm sure you all know it. I'm not gonna walk you through it. And this is what you get at the end, right? You're gonna get this report with average monthly searches. You can basically filter it however you want. Let's say you want only low competition keywords. Now you'll see the lowest competition keywords uh, and so on. But what's most important, for example, in my process, I highlight some specific keywords that I think may complete, like make complete sense to add them. For example, some of the keywords can be a little bit uh, like Salesforce automation. Yeah, it might work, it might not work. But for example, if someone says marketing automation agency and for my business, it, it's like very relevant and that's what I provide, I would kind of highlight it and focus on, focus on these keywords so that we don't waste our money on something that's maybe later on when we have everything set up, we can test, let's say, these keywords. So you, then you create a different Google sheet and then you have like the most something super relevant to what you're selling. Let's say automation expert. And then you see the final number of average monthly searches. And let's say in Google ads, you can expect a five to 10% CTR. So CTR is whenever people click on your ad, it's like impression and clicks. Uh, so 10%, it would be out of 17,000 impressions, 10% CTR you get 1,700 clicks in, in Google Ads. So you have it, you have your negative keywords, and then basically you can run your Google Ads campaign. And for example, one other thing that's pretty cool, I ran a Google Ads script that basically shows all the competitors for this spe specific keywords in these specific locations. So it's literally a snapshot. For example, we run it from September 5th until September 12th. Uh, people typed these five keywords in these locations. And this is what we got in terms of who's advertising for these keywords. We get this guy, this guy, and so on. You can see their visibility. So who got the most impressions? Basically, you, you see all your competitors if you're in the automation space. Uh, and we're all in the automation space. And I must say, like, literally, the competition is pretty bad. I, I kind of skim through the landing pages of these guys who advertise paper clicks on Google and take a look at their website. What is this? This is, like, pretty bad. I think if you just like jump in with a better website, you'll have like better conversions and better kind of uh, results because- Also, mm -hmm. it's like people, I mean, if, if they're running ads, of course, I, I'm sure it works, but I'm surprised that something like that would convert this. 
they're just positioning their website first when somebody searches for AI and it's that website. And the point is for someone that gets the website to click on contact us and send them an email, right? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm sure it's working for them, but I'm surprised it does. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it's working for them. Like, because I think they just have a lot of money from a different kind of source. And because I can't imagine that, for example, this website who spends the most money on these keywords, do you think it really works for them? Like, people find, <laughs> like, I don't understand. Like, if I was an entrepreneur, I wouldn't understand what's happening here. Like, They're laundering. oh, yeah. So actually, very important part. So... I just filtered by keyword, let's say just automation agency. So this uh, this column, it's basically just automation agency, people who typed automation agencies in these three locations. And here we can see the advertisers who showed up for these keywords and it's specifically Google ads. It's not organic search, it's just Google ads. Um, and we can see the visibility. For example, here, it's a little bit different. The story is a little bit different. It's not like this other five keywords. It's just automation agency. Let's check out these guys. Their domain name is solid. Literally, automationagency.com. Yeah. Your marketing task heroes. Virtual whatever. Yeah, these guys are good. I think, for example, this guy is definitely making money. from the Google ads. Like I'm sure people like leaving their information, talking to them in the chat, right? What So. what would be like a like a funnel to sell automations like services in general through a website like getting to them or having a lead magnet? What would be the best? What would be the best? I mean, I can only speak from the Google Ads perspective. Um, I think this is good. Like you just, yeah, you just have a form and you want people to leave their info. Uh, some people put a, let's say, they put some chat bots here, right? And it's more kind of engaging. Uh, Depends. I, I don't like the chatbots. I think the best thing is just to have a form where people submit it. Uh, for example, categorizing it, it's also good. For example, you see, it's like they're seeing, are you an entrepreneur or are you an agency, right? So that's good. And yeah, and basically you can uh, show up also here for this specific keyword. Uh, in your specific location, let's say you're an automation expert in Spain, right? So you don't want LA or Germany or whatever. You just put a location Spain and you target this keyword and you basically, let's say, get to number one visibility. You're above everyone else. And then you see if you get leads on your website or don't get leads, it can be like a conversion problem, like in terms of your website, it's just not addressing a specific need or it doesn't look good. Or sometimes, you know, these obvious keywords, let's say automation agency, you think they're going to work, but sometimes they don't. Like literally you get no conversions from Google ads for like seemingly very relevant keywords in your space. Uh, that's, that's the game, basically. You have to test it. And what's interesting, you see Fiverr basically showing up, Klaviyo for some reason, right? Even though this automation agent, it just shows that they didn't put, like they didn't work with negative keywords. You see, this is another example. For example, Clavio, they shouldn't advertise on the keyword automation agency. So it means someone on Clavio's team didn't put in this negative keyword and they're just spending money for no reason, right? This necess necessarily means that they're spending money or could it be just that they're positioning good because SEO or something? No, no, no. Uh, is this... this competitive analysis, it's only Google ads. So it means, Okay. for example, automation agency, right? Someone types automation agency. And it's great. For example, these results in terms of visibility, we had a scraper that went and basically saw like only sponsored ads, only sponsored in this specific location. It's not organic. 
So it's not counting organic, only Google ads. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, the last kind of uh, sheet, sheet with it, that we have is basically what exactly they had in their head, headlines. For example, you see, this, these people have leading of automation. Oh, you see, this is industrial automation. So it's for factories and it's not like make.com, it's for factory automation. Um, so, but basically here we see the ad title for this specific website. Let's say these guys, right? They had this ad title. This is their text, what they had, because we scraped it all. And this is the keyword that triggered this ad. Then we see the visibility and we see location. So basically in LA for this keyword, this advertiser showed an ad that looked like this. And basically you can just skim through this, maybe come up with your own headlines if you're gonna decide to launch a Google Ads campaign for your own business. And uh, this is different to the website title. Sorry? This is different to the website title that you see when you Google like organically the website. Uh, come one more time, please, sorry. Yeah, so for example, uh, if you go to your Google search result um, that you have on your final tab, uh, the title is different to this here or it's the same one? I mean, it's it's the same that would appear in an organic search or it's a different one when you're running ads. You can set a different title than your organic title. No, no, it's completely different. It's completely different. It has nothing okay. to do with organic. So yeah, you, you, go, you go to Google Ads and then you come up with whatever. You can put uh, number one automation agency in Canada. So it has nothing to do with your organic. For example, this is organic, right? This is not sponsored. So their yeah. organic is automation agency marketing task heroes. But in their ads, they can put whatever they want. It's like multiple okay. headlines, so multiple descriptions. So yeah, it has nothing to do with organic. Cool. So it doesn't grow it from their meta tags. Like it does it for the other. It doesn't it's, it's what? Like uh, the organic ones, I think it's the meta tags, right? That uh, have the title and everything. Uh, yeah, it's just whatever they set up with their uh, right. SEO team. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. With Google Ads, you just set your own headlines, you set your own descriptions, and then you just run them. And you pay per clicks. So, for example, if I click here, right, um, let's say five dollars, they just lost five dollars because they showed up. I clicked, and this is their landing page, uh, right? So, so yeah, I guess the CPCs are so high for the automation agency space because all these industrial automations, they're bidding on the same keywords, and it's like, so it's not great, right? So, for example, if we go back to our um, to our research, so let's say instead of automation agency, we're going to put something, let's say we put IT automation services, like something that we're, that we're doing, right? And again, you see industrial automation software. Even though we put IT automation services, these guys are doing a very bad job with negative keywords. So they're showing up with something that's uh, not relevant to the user. For example, I'm a user. I'm looking for a make.com expert. And I have an industrial automation company that's showing up in ads, which is not relevant. I may click accidentally, and they're going to lose money when I click. But but then I'm going to see the content of the website, and I'm going to be like, oh, this is not what I'm looking for. And then you go down, and then you see what's relevant to you. I assume you can you can see somewhere when you're running the campaign if like people are bouncing, right? So if it's a wrong keyword. What? Um, like after the campaign is running, if you're targeting a bad keyword, I assume like you will see like a high bounce rate or something, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, if you're running Google Ads and you're like, oh, I need to understand like where I'm showing up. As the problem is I can't show you because I have live Google Ads account, no accounts here, right? So I can't really show you the report, but it's called uh, search term reports, right? And you can see exactly where you're showing up, right? On Google Ads and uh, add them into negative keywords because you're like, oh, this is not what I need. If I'm in industrial automation company, I don't want show to show up digital marketing automation with Zapier to show up on this keyword. But I can see it in the, yeah, I can see it and I can uh, just exclude it from showing up on Google Ads. There is a report like that, yes. Cool, cool. L Lorraine yes. is asking if uh, you're going to share the spreadsheet afterwards. Yes, guys. So this spreadsheet, I'm going to share it with you all, like this one, right? Uh, let me actually walk you through. So I, I recorded a video so that you further understand what's happening in this spreadsheet. Um, the problem is this is not a downloadable spreadsheet. Uh, to make it downloadable, um, I just ask you a quick favor. Um, if you can just go and like uh, leave a recommendation on LinkedIn or just on our company page, I'll just send a link to whoever wants it. Just email me. Um, like for example, in the contact information, just email me that you want it. And I'll make it downloadable for you. But everyone can have access to it like when it's not downloadable. So, Excellent. but if you leave the review, it's gonna be downloadable. You can copy it, like rewrite it, whatever you want to do. Cool. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, this is an email. So I think I'm done. Like I think I walk through every part of what I wanted to share in terms of uh, keyword research, market research. I think you have some picture of what's going on. So I'm ready to take in any questions. Uh, so yeah.